and we take it from there. But we must not um, forget to, to, to always speak out on these issues, to, to, to keep Bingy Eye Reliance in the space, to keep Sister Enzinga, you know, we watched that Bingy Eye Reliance thing, you know, and one year and still it is being investigated and there is no report. Now with Sister Enzinga, um, that investigation is going on like it don't have no end either. They expect us to forget. I understand um, where I see, I think Muta is, is, is mentioning that she's suing the state. But, I, but, 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 but where is the report? Where is the report? Where is the yeah. report from Bingy Eye Reliance? Where is the investigation from Sister Nzinga? We are still being treated like, um, like the handmaid. That's what we have become here in Jamaica. We, we, we are nothing under their feet. And, and how, long, how much longer are we going to accept this? If this has happened, had happened to any of, of, of their children, would the report would have been in a long time ago. All right, so many, many, many requests for me to repeat the name of the book and movie that I mentioned earlier with Mrs. Waterford and Mr. Waterford. <laughs> you know, it's called The Handmaid's Tale. The T-H-E, Handmaid's, H-A-N-D-M-A-I-D-S, Tale, T-A-L-E. And I think one, once you've read it, let us have a conversation about it, please. Or oh, you've watched the movie. Once you've watched the movie, let's have a conversation about it. But the book should be available. I don't know who has it, but it is a book that is um, pretty well known. Margaret Atwood is the, is the, um, the author. And the movie, um, I think it's doing pretty well. I think it's a series, actually, with five or six seasons, actually. But it speaks directly to our condition, right? Uh, and it's a dystopic um, book and movie, as I said before, but it speaks directly to our condition um, where you have Mrs. Waterford who is unable to have children and Mr. Waterford and what they did to the women. Uh, and, and, and that, in you know, Mrs. Waterford is the one who holds the hand um, of, of, of the handmaid behind her head as she, the handmaid rests in her lap literally between her legs and and uh, you know and mr waterford comes in and and, and um, it's a morning program and children are listening and so on but 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 rapes are literally speaking and over and over and over and they do this with all the handmaids and there's much more to the story but another part of the story that we have that, that i want you to pay attention to is how freedoms are taken away just bit by bit drip by drip bit by bit and the disaster risk, risk management act once a disaster risk management act kicks into place um, and then a freedom is taken here and a bit is taken here and a bit is taken here so that even for us, you know, as a citizenry, for us, you see, even if you agree with the vaccine, it is no excuse for paying attention to the extent to which our freedoms are being taken away. And this is where we are failing. This is where we are going wrong. We are creating a dictatorship. Look at the posture of the Prime Minister. He's autocratic. He blames the poor for every bad decisions he makes. He's narcissistic. Look, it, 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 I have things to do. Let me go and I'll come back. I have to go to my next guest, and we're going to talk about, um, and this is not a Rastafari um, situation, because the Millennium Council has written to the Prime Minister, and we want to go now to talk to my sister, uh, Queen Mother, Sister Queen Mama Ifia Home Seals, who is an international Rastafari citizen. An international Rastafari citizen, she holds a BA in healthcare administration, health psychology, and a certified phlebotomist. She's a seamstress, a small-scale farmer, and businesswoman, a founding member of the Rastafari Youth Initiative Council, first female chair of the Nyabingi Administrative Council in Jamaica. 
She's a member of the Rastafari Alliance of Panama, executive member of the North Carolina Rastafari Union, and serving as ambassador to the Caribbean Rastafari community. She's third in line of seven daughters and one brother to Naya Bingi Einshens, Queen Mama Yanzi, and Bingi Iri Lion, born and bred in Rastafari, particularly the Naya Bingi Order. She joins me now on the phone lines. Good morning, Sister Queen Mama Ifia Home Seals. How are you doing, my sister? Thanks, 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 yeah. yeah, and everyone that yes. is listening and participating. Yes, I give thanks. I know that I just call out your wall of your name. <coughs> but it is, <laughs> it is, it is what I it is. I tell you. It says home, seals, and I always kind of, even though I, I it's, the, it's the European um, name, one is the English, British, uh-huh. and one is the the, the, um, the Spanish yes. seals. But it's, it's sealing the home. Ah. Feeling the home, the importance of the home. Yes, brilliant, Our responsibility brilliant. Responsibility as a family-oriented yes. pirate. Yes, and to remind our listeners, even though we just said it, that you are one of the daughters of Bingy Irie Lyon. Interestingly enough, our sister before you, Dr. Uh, Kerida MacDonald, just mentioned um, your dad, Bingy Irie Lyon, and what happened to yes. him in the Linstead Hospital. Um, as we go forward into looking at the Rastafari press iFriends. But the, as I said earlier, you know, in, this, is, this is a synchronicity at, at the highest because I got your letter, I got your letter, um, a copy of a letter you sent to the Prime Minister, I think five days before I got the press um, release from the, um, the, the group who were putting on the conference, the iFriends, um, on Wednesday. And interestingly enough, I have both interviews running back to back. It wasn't planned that way, but here we are. So the um, a letter, the the Ethiopia, the, sorry, the Millennium Council has written to the Prime Minister, copied to um, other principals, the Governor General, and so on, regarding human rights um, violations and crimes against the Rastafari community. I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, what prompted the letter at this time? Yes, I well, um, if there I noticed Sunday and the document it was read in collabor in a collaborative irit um with the protest that went on on the sixth of um of um August yes. um, Independence Day. And before that I and I in collaboration, as is mentioned on the document that I forwarded it to the I, mm-hmm. um, of the, the Millennium Council, the Ratified Millennium Council, in collaboration with the Spanish Town House of Naya Bingi. Yes. But at this moment, in my iris, from a personal perspective, the name that is collaborating is not important. Mm-hmm. Is the, is the initiative, because I am reckoning with the I friends that will be happening on the 8th mm-hmm. of, um, of this month here. Yeah, which is Wednesday, uh, yes. I friends, yes. Mm-hmm. Because as Bingi Ayre always promote for those who know Bingi Ayre, it was all about the unity and the, not uniformity, but the unity, the common grounds mm-hmm. under which I and I stand according to the world zone of His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the first. Yes. And so the collaboration Reckoning with with with, with the um the, the Rastafari Coalition, mm-hmm. the Rastafari Millennium Council, the Naya Bingi Order, the Dark Foundation, the Ark, are some of the ones who have formally penned uh, documents um, addressing the matter at this time of the violation of the Rastafari. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. prior to the um, the Millennium Council and the the, the Saint Catherine um, collaboration, I and I had a Zoom um, conference or meeting with under the the, the, the theme uh, Unity in Diversity, um, reckoning with the Emancipation Day celebration, where I and I had um, ones like uh, Professor. Uh, Verin Shepard, uh, uh, Muta Baruka, uh, the Honorable Mike Henry, uh, uh, 
Dr. Louis Moiston. We're standing by to get our sister back online. In the meantime, greetings and uh, our condolences to all the families and friends of persons who have lost their lives from the deadly flooding in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. We're watching that closely. So many of us have relatives in the USA and in particular New York and so on. There were loss of lives along the Northeast Coast, especially New York, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia, Westchester County. We are holding you in our hearts. Um, we'll stay strong. Um, even as you grieve, remember to stay strong so that you're able to pick up the pieces. Stay safe and recover. Uncle Jason Neb to, to you as we go back to the United States where our sister is also um, speaking from. Y- yes, my sister. So you were saying um, that there was this meeting that was held with um, Professor Shepard, Louis Moyston and others. That's where we lost you. Yes, um, mm-hmm. yes, I. So the letter really came out of um, um, Mutabaruka um, speaking and emphasizing the landlessness and how the community has been misrepresented. And at the time, um, I and I touched on the the issue of the, the uh, Princess Nzinga trimming. Mm-hmm. And so out of that, it propelled I and I, I reach to say, yes, let I and I speak out, coming out of that energy of collaboration and highlighting the misrepresentation of the grassroots people, not just in Jamaica, but across the the world, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. out of that um, that uh, propelled I and I to put this um, letter together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and just tell our, our, our listeners, uh, what are some of the issues raised in the letter? Yes, so um, it, it's highlighting the, 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 the human rights violation across the board, um, particularly there in Jamaica. And um, one of the, 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 um, some of the, the, the pointers that are highlighted in this document is the, the brutal, in recent times, the brutal trimming of our Rastafari youth and nursing student, Princess Nzinga Candace King, at the four parts police station by the corporal who mm-hmm. did it. Mm-hmm. Um, the brutal marring of ionized ancient Bingy Iron Lion in the Linstead Hospital that significantly impacted his demise um, 2020 of um, yes, 2020 um, October he, he passed away having experienced that traumatic um, situation mm-hmm. that added to his um, demise. Um, the refusal of admittance of a young girl of the African conscious Virgo family where the farmer principal of Kensington Primary School told her parents to cut her hair to secure a place mm-hmm. in their school. Mm-hmm. Um, the refusal of a Manning Hill High School um, student um, who wore Bantu knots, mm-hmm. the one that they call the, the China bombs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know why they call it China bombs, and I don't think the, that here can be done in it, it's, it's coming. Yeah, from, it's coming it, from the it, Buddha. I think it's coming from the Buddha. And what's interesting about the Buddha is that it, that exactly shows that the Buddha was wearing Bantu knots and that the Buddha himself was black, but just gone. <laughs> so yes, yes. it is what it is. Yeah. So, so those are some of the pointers that are um, highlighted in the in the in the um in the in the letter to the prime minister and so as i said it was read on that first um uh protest that was held collaboratively right. with members of the rastafari community mm-hmm. at the the mandela park right on the 6th of um of august Right. And so, so, so for, and li- I, so, so for yeah. listeners who, who weren't there, and I hear the phone there in the, in the background. Um, it's, so against this background, um, there's also, um, you're making recommendations and you're, and you're, 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 you're requesting the intervention of the prime minister. Um, <laughs> what exactly yeah. are you recommending and, and what are you requesting? So the, um, um, 
bottom line, top line um, recommendation is that in the letter we said, we recommend your immediate intervention through the powers of the office of the Prime Minister to effectuate an Afrocentric commission to research the connected charges in legislation and call for a public bill human rights violation and race discrimination act to enforce the current development to protect the indigenous rights of communities against blatant crimes of human rights violations mm -hmm. All right, and so and and and, and, and I hear the point you're making that, that this feeds right into the inference. Also, that's going to happen um, in on on Wednesday, um, which we we spoke to Dr. Carida McDonald about a while ago, just before you came on. All right, um, so so it is just it is just the frequencies that I think we're vibrating on. Why it is all coming together the way it is coming together. Um, uh, there's nothing we can do to stop this now because the vibration is is well underway. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to what's going to happen on Wednesday and then to take it from there. As far as um, your father, Bingi, Ari Lyons, is concerned, though, can you give us an idea as to where that case is, what is the situation now? But before you do that, remind our listeners of what happened to your dad. Yes. Yes, so, so Bingi, Ari Lyons, as um, those of I and I who know Bingi, Ari Lyons, Bingi, Ari Lyons has been there. I remember when... Um, Aishawawa, um and Sister Ivan, Mama Ivan Pope, um, her mother, um, came to the, the, the rite of passage, or the calling, the nine day after Bingi Ari had passed away. Um, um, she remembered in 1974, 75, around that time, when my father, Bingi Ari Lyon, and my mother moved out of Kingston, West Kingston, and moved into St. Catherine that he used the Naya Bingi as a, 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 a means of consecrating the space before the gate was built there. So she remembered and she recounted in 2020 when she went to the gate and said, well, this is where I came at that Naya Bingi foundation when I was pregnant with Aishi. Mm -hmm. yes. But Bingi Ayri had um, suffered a stroke in, um, in uh, 2020 and was taken to the Linsid um, Public Hospital. And um, I and I was there, you know, I and I was there 24 7 um, with Bingi I were actually, we coordinated a ship that I and I, I don't even know how it was coordinated, but it was coordinated so um, orderly that we took um, ship, um, six hour ship right through until when he was placed on the ward. Mm -hmm. um, in April, I think it was the 20th, uh, uh, 5th of April, he was placed on the ward in the Lindsay Hospital. Mm -hmm. And, um, or somewhere around that time. Yes. And, um, at one point, one day, when they had the first shutdown in the Lindsay Hospital, um, and I were told that uh, we weren't able to go to visit him on that day. So that was the first time he was being left in the hospital by himself without mm -hmm. I and I being present mm -hmm. there with him. Yeah. And so I and I had called the hospital to say, what, you know, how things was going with him. And the, the person that we spoke with at the time told us that we, were, we could have uh, visited him and there was a seemingly... Um, look a confusion as to whether visiting hours were allowed and or whether not. And so we spoke to a, a, a CEO representative at the hospital at the time and um, he said he was going to check on that because he wasn't aware that person weren't allowed to visit on that day. Mm -hmm. However, and I went the following um, day on the 26th of um, April 2020 and when and I went into I went into the hospital um, because it was just one of us who were allowed to go in. Mm -hmm. And when I went in there, um, boy, it was so traumatic that I saw Bingy Ari um, like he was in a, a, a day. Mm -hmm. He was in he was is like it's as that though his mind were were gone out. Mm -hmm. He he didn't. Mm -hmm. He wasn't aware where he was or what was happening, and his eyes were just bulging out. So when I looked at his face, mm -hmm. I saw that his precept 
is beard, he, he told us some children that it's not beard, it's, it's this precept yes, where it yeah. connects it to mm. Psalm 1, uh, 33, mm. you know, don't go down, don't play on the And when I look at it, he, he didn't have his beard, it was removed, and the way in which it seemed like it was, it was so gruesome and untidy, as my sister Aisha stated when they, when you did the interview with her and yeah. um, Mr. Bert Samuel, it mm-hmm. seemed as though his precept was removed with a surgical knife. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. knowing what he had gone through throughout the time as from when we were children to protect I and I covenant, which, which is what I and I locked is called, mm-hmm. and his precept, not just for I and I, it's personal, immediate family, but for Rastafari and the protection of I and I is grassroots people. That is always his advocacy yeah, for yeah. the time. So that was what happened at, when we went there. His beard was removed without I and I permission and that traumatized him and yeah. pushed on him, pushed on him so much and I that remember, he, yeah. he, 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 he couldn't find himself mm-hmm. to come forward to any semblance of stability mm-hmm. or sanity. Mm-hmm. And so that um, really contributed to his death. Yes. Yes. Wow, I remember your sister telling me that, you know, when she saw it, it looked like it was, you know, the word we use in Jamaica, chamba, chamba, them don't even take care. Yes, yes, it was terrible, like they use, terrible, like they use a terrible. scalpel, you know. Um, and up to today, we have not um, gotten any, any, um, has it? I know that um, they had, uh, when Mr. Samuels had written to them, the hospital, they, um, they said that they were doing an investigation. So have you had any report, any report on the investigation? Okay. There was no response yes, yes. from the hospital with the investigation? No. Um, no. So where do you go from here then? Because this you're talking about all over a year now, isn't it? Yes. yes. Right. Well, it, it, it kind of seems like we're tied up in the, the bureaucracy of the system where... <clears throat> Um, because uh, being the IRA signature is not on uh, um, our birth certificate. We, we are stuck in a space where they are requiring that um, because you know how Rastafari right. has been right. in um, burying down the concept of colonialism right through time and this is how I and I was grown up. So mm-hmm. in terms of being the IRA putting a signature on a birth certificate under the the concept of the, col- um, the colonial system and, mm-hmm. and so on. Bingy Ari did not do that because if it was up to him, it, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have gotten um, ready. For and you see, and this is why the um, inference is happening, you know, on Wednesday. It's very critical now because it's small details like this because if you understand and recognize the indigenous community of Rastafari, then you'll understand the, the irates, you'll understand the, the policies, you'll understand the traditions, and, and something like this would not be questioned in the way that it's been questioned in the, in the, in the so-called Babylon system then. You know, this would, yes. this, this would be understood from, a, from a, a more sensitive perspective. Oh boy! So you're saying that because of that, you you know the family is caught up in the in the bureaucracy that there that there is no report, but an investigation. We, what we was was we're, we, it seems as though we, we are stuck there right at this moment because you know to go through some of these bureaucracy, even though it was a, a, a pro bono um, um, legal process um, to, 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 from this aspect of it. Monies are are, are are charged and so on, but it's interesting because um, it 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 really Donna and I and I even more and even my mother who I and I have to be constantly be there for her and to keep her strengthened, you know, because our lifelong over fifty years in twenty sixteen they celebrated their fifty years together, and and that partner is gone in the way in which he's gone, you know, so she's going through our emotional um, oh. um, struggles and I and I the yes. children and grandchildren and great grandchildren have to be there strengthening our in whatever way I and I are able to and to hear this part of it, the process mm. that the, the bureaucracy of the colonial system yeah. Yeah. is preventing I and I from gaining yeah. justice for this for your father um, brutal uh, attack on, on the ancient and, um, and Angel just, Rastafari. It even impacts her more, and mm-hmm. I, and I have to be there, and so on. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, just to mention, uh, one of the reasons why, too, I, I think it's important for I to highlight and illuminate 
the ancient is that according to I and I, the Rastafari, that the ancient are the custodian. And if they, I remember when I and I did come on first talking about this issue here in 2020, mm-hmm. I and I spoke about the way in which Bingi Ari and Mama Yans grew up, and, and particularly Bingi Ari, who emphasized that um, I and I, his immediate family, will be Ari when the community is Isla. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's not an easy one to put on a family. So in, in, in that, in growing and understanding that premise from which he continued to work within Rastafari and Pan-African, mm-hmm. um, it shows that it wasn't about his individual family. It was never about his individual family. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's even created upset within Anna's personal family because mm-hmm. Anna are saying, um, how could you extend yourself to the extended family without making sure that the mm-hmm. personal family is stronger. Yes. You know, you this, know level, this level of injustice, you, my, my sister, you know, this level of injustice, you know, we talk about an unjust justice system, but this level of injustice against um, the indigenous community of Rastafari in Jamaica, you know, is intolerable. I don't, I don't know how much longer um, even the society can maintain, you know, because if it happens to Rastafari, then it's happening to the entire nation. Um, Rastafari yeah. um, remains a conscience of the nation, um, which is Jamaica. Maker. For me, the, the Ministry of Culture has a responsibility to intervene. The Ministry of Tourism has a responsibility to intervene. The Prime Minister has a responsibility to intervene. This silence, this silence from different, the Minister of Justice has a responsibility. The Attorney General has a responsibility to intervene. If there's an injustice, this kind of injustice against a Rastafari elder on the island of Jamaica where you pretend that Rastafari is celebrated when you're using and abusing, like Mr. Waterford, the Rastafari of Jamaica, then um, you, you also have an obligation to intervene. So where is the Ministry of Culture? Um, Honorable Babsy Grange, where are you on this? Where are you on this? Where is your voice on this? We expect more from you. Within your um, own ministry, you have set up... Um, uh, a, 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 a position that is responsible for Rastafari affairs. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. is wh- where is the voice that leads that I position? I, I to- yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, you know, when I look at it, it frightens me as an individual and as a mother and as a grandmother. My daughter, Jamelia, she serves within corporate Jamaica. And the others served in corporate America. Um, I will then look at the violation that the three major institutions in a nation that supposed to be providing essential services to the community, to the society, have violated Rastafari. The healthcare institution violated our ancient. The education institution violated our children. And the security institution violated our woman. Being the Iron Lion was violated through the healthcare institution. Um, the Virgo family, um, um, the seven year old Virgo student who was um, a band, was violated by the education institution. And our present situation that I and I have dealing with, Princess Nzinga King, has been violated by the security. And um, justice, and justice. And yeah. security and justice because remember she was dragged into court and charged for disorderly conduct exactly. tried and found guilty you know there, there, there's, a, there's a lot happening here that we have to unpack we don't have enough time because we're out of time my sister but I want to continue this conversation with you um, as, I suppose we wait and see what happens out of the eye fronts because I'm sure it's going to be dealing with some of these issues and we take it from there but we must not um, forget to, to, to always speak out on these issues, to, to, to keep Bingi Eye Reliance in the space, to keep Sister Enzinger. You know, we watch that Bingi Eye Reliance thing, you know, and one year and still it is being investigated and there is no report. Now with Sister Enzinger, um, that investigation is going on like it don't have no end either. They expect us to forget. I understand um, where I see, I think Muta is, is, is mentioning that she's suing the state, but, uh, but, 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 but where is the report? Where is the report? Where is the report from Bingi Iron Lions? Where is the investigation from Sister Nzinga? You're, we are still being treated like, um, like the handmaid. That's what we have become here in Jamaica. 
we we, we are I nothing see. under their feet and and how long how much longer are we going to accept this if this has happened had happened to any of 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 their children with the report would have been in a long time ago you know this is disgraceful my sister, I'll keep in, in touch with you. We'll continue to have the conversation. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I promise you, we will not forget Bingy Ari Lyons in this space. Thank you so much, my sister. Mm -hmm. And all the best to you, and your, and you and your mother. I just want to give um, due respect to the Naya Bingy Order and all the houses and mansions of Rastafari. I want to give due respect to the Millennium Code, to the work that has been done. I want to give due respect to the, 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 the group that is working with um, uh, Princess Nzinga and the Iphant at this time, the coalition of, of um, Rastafari. Mm -hmm. I want to give due respect to the Dark Foundation and the ARC who is seemingly collaborating and just to recognize that Rastafari has done much work in the Jamaican society. We have done much and everything has been pushed on, whether it was the pinnacle or the scab parts or all the identity work that I and I have done into the Jamaican society that have been impacting the world over the RR trial that took place in 2000, the first fact-finding uh, mission that was coordinated by Rastafari. All of these things, being the Iron Lion, was always a part of. And so we meet them daily, and we hope that the advocacy on this human rights part will bear fruit Give through you. the collaboration of each and every one of our Thank you, sir. and I and I Pan African family. Thank you so and much, I my did. sister. Oh, um, anytime saying exactly what it was. We thought that we tapped in tap into Naomi Zuckerman. As we are wont to do, who's been a nurse for over 60 years, student of natural healing for over 45 years. And she's been living in Jamaica since 1979. She is very active in environmental issues and its relationship to human health. And one of the things over the years that she spent time looking at is informed consent. So we talked to her about that. And we talked about informed consent, you see, against the background last week of um, the vaccines. And we were speaking specifically about children and the 12 to 15 year olds who were um, you know, now being identified as those who should also be vaccinated. And we raised a question when I was speaking with Dr. Wayne West about informed consent. So let us spend a little time talking about that. Naomi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us inside of the Africa Forum and for taking the time to help us to understand a little bit more about what is informed consent. Okay, I think it's something fairly easy for most people to understand mm -hmm. because it's exactly what it says mm -hmm. that many times in the medical world people take medications from the doctor and over the counter over the counter drugs and have tests and operations and all kinds of procedures without being told anything about what the known risks are. Mm -hmm. And even though most people do not have very much medical knowledge or understanding, I think if most things were explained to them in simpler language than hospital people tend to use, that most people could grasp the idea mm -hmm. and make more informed choices about what they want to do with their body they have to live in till it's over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so something small as, um, you know, getting antibiotics, which is not so small, but which is prevalent. Um, you're thinking that uh, sometimes antibiotics, for example, are prescribed uh, and persons don't, are not necessarily told um, what, what the risks are uh, or what the side effects might be. But, but I know that I've heard um, the medical practitioners argue that sometimes it's not too good to tell the the person, the client, what's, what the side effects can be because they will somehow take that on to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> the power of suggestion. Yeah. In a way, that's true. However, it's easy to document these things. Mm -hmm. And with antibiotics specifically, the main gripe I have is doctors who prescribe antibiotics without 
taking a culture of anything. Mm -hmm. If there's supposedly an infection, you take a sterile swab and send it to the lab, and they plant it in a Petri dish, and in 48 hours, you know exactly what germs are there and which antibiotics will kill them. Mm -hmm. And so they love to prescribe what they call broad spectrum antibiotics that happen to kill a lot of germs, but many times infections are caused by two or three different germs. Mm -hmm. And so maybe the broad spectrum antibiotic gets one or two of them. Mm -hmm. But then the other one says, hey, we got the place to ourselves, and he calls all his aunties and cousins and says, come on, let's party. So things seem to get better for a little while, Mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden, it flares up again. Mm -hmm. Then, because you've already had antibiotics, it's hard to get an accurate culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 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 the other... Right. So, so within within the context of um, vaccines, uh, what would informed consent look like? What would it be? To me, the most important thing to know, what I usually tell people, there's a package, a little piece of paper that's all wadded up and folded up small that comes in every drug, including Panadol that you buy over the counter. Um, And it's usually got very small writing and most people just throw it away and don't bother to read it. But the most important things to me on there are the ingredients and the known side effects. And with this current COVID madness, um, what I wish more people were being told is that the vaccine is not a guarantee, that there are people who are fully vaccinated who are getting COVID-19, especially now with all the emerging variants. Mm -hmm. And it's still very important for them to be wearing a mask in public crowded places because even though they get the virus, they might not get sick. They might not even have one symptom. Mm -hmm. But they can still be spreading it around. Mm -hmm. So so now this information you think is not being um, communicated in the way that you'd like to see it uh, in terms of people having that that, that, um, that the level of information uh, exactly. regarding the vaccine. But they would have already taken the vaccine, though. Yes, I already, I, I, I already hear a lot of people explaining why they don't have a mask on because they're fully vaccinated. Well, I hear and that, too. I hear that, too. People just walk up to you and you say, oh, you know, give, give me the shoulder. And they say, you know, give me the elbow. And they say, no, I'm fully vaccinated. I can hug you. But, so, so, obviously, yeah. there, are, there are a lot of people who don't know um, that being fully vaccinated does not mean what? It does not mean it's a guarantee that you cannot catch the virus or spread it around. What it seems to be uh, doing is it assures the people who are vaccinated mostly do not become critically ill and die. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, and we had the same thing before, because even before there was a vaccine, we were told it was possible for people to have the virus for two weeks and not have a clue that anything was wrong and meanwhile be spreading it all around. Right. We were talking a lot about asymptomatic people long before the vaccines came out, that you can be asymptomatic. You can have it. It doesn't mean you probably have a high immune system. You might not have any um, symptoms at all, but you can transmit it. Uh, so, so, so it's the very same thing now if you take the vaccine. So the protocols must be observed. What else, what else would, you be, would you like to see in terms of informed consent? Because that's a big one, by the way. That's a really, really big one. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. For example, CAT scans are very common. Mm-hmm. But they're often done when a regular old normal x-ray would do. Because they're more impressive mm-hmm. and they make more money mm-hmm. for the medical mm-hmm. industry. <laughs> mm-hmm. But on the other hand, they expose you to a lot more radiation. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so, so you, so, so in terms of the the, the, the information that's out there, is that the, the client individuals don't necessarily know this, and so that if you are prescribed a CAT scan, you'll go and get it. So, what what is the responsibility of the individual? In, in, is, is, does a state have more responsible, responsibility, say, in a pandemic where there's so much data, and notice I didn't say information, there's so much data out there that people are just tumbling over themselves with, that does the state then have a, a critical responsibility, do you think, to ensure that there is informed consent? <laughs> in my opinion, yes, but it's not legally required, mm -hmm. and um, I'm and getting ready to send an email to the Prime Minister and Mr. Tufton with some suggestions about how things could be more clearly explained to people so there'd be a broader understanding because a lot of people just take it for nonsense. Um, but after 60 years of being a nurse, my own personal philosophy is we must protect ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get informed and do what you know is sensible, regardless of what the so-called authorities are saying, mm. because this thing is so new, and it's not a natural virus, it, and basically I think everybody's channel. grasping at like straws, share. because Clinton we have like strong. 20 minutes experience with this thing, mm -hmm. and nobody really knows what it can do, or what it will do, a, a shot in the dark. We just wait, <laughs> wait, wait and see what happens. But but let me ask you this. What are some of the issues that you will raise with the Prime Minister and Mr. Tufton? To more clearly explain that, yes, they're encouraging people to get the vaccines, but that the vaccines are not a guarantee. And they are still personally responsible to wear a mask in crowded public places so that if they catch it, they won't be spreading it around to everybody in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something each of us can do. And too many people are taking the inconvenience of the mask and as if it were oppression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means to me they've never known the oppression. <laughs> you know? Because there's well, no it might be oppressive. But it's certainly yeah. not oppression. <laughs> it's inconvenient, and there's times it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, on the other hand... But wear I your mask, wear people, your mask, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I also see people walking up the roadside by themselves, not a soul near them, and they're in the sun, and supposedly Miss Rona doesn't like the sun, mm -hmm. and they're wearing their mask. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, that means they don't really understand the principle of the mask. Right. So, what, so what, what, what principle should they understand? That in order to get it, well, one of the main things people don't realize, most people, is that every time you breathe or talk or cough or anything, your breath carries moisture. Mm -hmm. There are some practitioners who say we lose two quarts of water a day just from breathing. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever cleaned a glass, or your eyeglasses or anything by breathing on it, mm -hmm. you know there's moisture there. Mm -hmm. And all microbes need to live in a little microscopic drop of moisture. Mm -hmm. So if you're, usually they say these things can travel depending on how big, vigorously someone's breathing or talking or yelling or whatever, at between three to six feet. Mm-hmm. They can't live, if they fall on a non-moist surface, they're not going to live very long because they can't live without their moisture. So if nobody's near you and you're walking up the street, um, you don't really need the mask. If you're alone in your car, you do not have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. But I've seen that. Yeah. Well, well, it's better you wear it alone in your car and walking up the street alone more than not wearing it at all, <laughs> I, yeah, would, I yeah. would say. There's a choice. Yeah. 
when I, I know I have a problem with jogging though. That when I go jogging, um, I really uh, can't. I can't jog in a mask, and I just have to. You know, but nobody's really near you or talking to you. Well, that's true. Well, that's true. Yes, yes, or, that's true. You know, so, so what's the big deal? So we, we um, expect. So we expect that these are some of the issues that you'll raise to the prime minister. Um, one is, you know, that the information obviously. Makes, mm-hmm, go ahead. Make things a little more clear and simplified. Mm-hmm. You know, because mostly it's like I call it medical terrorism. Um, you know, they just try to scare people into doing what they want them to do. Medical terrorism. <laughs> but I, I really believe mm-hmm. if you give people the facts. Mm-hmm. And they have a understanding of it instead of just doing what some dictator said. Mm-hmm. 